Ever wondered why your gradients just don't pop like the pros even though you have the same tools? You might think you've mastered the technique, but I'm willing to bet you're making at least one of these gradient ruining mistakes. You would not believe how many airbrushes I damaged and felt like hurling against the wall before discovering the six errors that kept me from achieving flawless gradients. So in this video, I'll reveal what each of these common mistakes are, demonstrate how artists of any skill level can easily transform their projects by addressing them, and show you something very simple that you've likely been overlooking this entire time. When I was just starting out, I remember the excitement of planning my designs and creating mock-ups just like this one for a DJ client. I'd prepare my colors and couldn't wait to dive headfirst into painting. Another part of the preparation involved marking out how far each color should be painted. However, one significant challenge that I faced was that certain colors, particularly neon ones, took way longer to paint and get right. These colors were a bit tricky to work with, but I eventually found a solution by using a paint buildup technique. This method involved applying multiple light coats, typically four to five layers, and starting with a more opaque foundation by mixing in some white for the first couple of coats. This made painting just about any color as part of a gradient infinitely easier. You can really learn a lot in this craft just by making your own mistakes. Trust me, I've had my fair share of them. Picture this, I was in a mad rush to finish a gradient and I admit, I skipped a crucial step. I didn't clean my airbrush cup as thoroughly as I should have. I just sprayed orange on the surface and thought I could get away with simply blowing out the excess into a cleaning pot without using any cleaner. But when I added yellow and white for the next color, something unexpected happened. The orange residue mixed in, unintentionally blending the colors and creating a slightly more orangish yellow. Since gradients are basically just the blending of colors, the closer their values and hues, the easier your job will be. So surprisingly, not cleaning your airbrushes thoroughly can actually make your life easier. Who would have thought? This next step can be invaluable for saving you time in the long run. If you're dealing with challenging to paint materials, spanning the gradient across multiple panels, or blending colors with pronounced value differences, consider hand painting during the third or fourth layer, especially if touch-ups later down the line are a concern. This way, you can ensure things like the stitching and areas where the panels overlap are covered up and have a reference for color matching down the line in case you missed any spots. Now we're essentially left with these big, broad bands of color and there's overspray everywhere. It's nowhere near a good gradient yet, but this next trick will really clean everything up. To cover up all of this paint that's way outside the lines, Take an even mixture of the two colors and backflow them together inside the airbrush cup. Then, spray this new color right along the dotted line. I like to call this the middle bar technique. Don't be afraid to go back with the original colors as well and try to spray them a bit more controlled on top of the middle bar blend. This is going to really soften up your blends. I gotta be honest with you, your gradient is still trash at this point until you can implement this next trick. I'm joking of course, but to get started and give it a try, locate the outer edges of your gradient. Then boost the color's intensity using that backflow technique and spray that new color near the edges. Try to think of your main challenge here as to expand the overall distance that your gradient travels across the color wheel. So what do you do as a final last ditch effort in case there are any spots that you're still unhappy with? Grab some sort of pattern or texture stencil and apply a slightly altered color to an area where you'd like to add some depth to your project. These textures will not only hide imperfections in your gradient, but also create visual interest drawing the viewer's eye. These really allow me to experiment with a wide range of cool patterns 
and infuse some of my own artistic touch. Once you've learned about these six crucial mistakes to avoid in your next gradient, you'll be able to tackle just about any design that comes your way. However, there's still one more crucial step you might be missing. Once the artwork is complete, you've got to find the right finisher to choose the perfect sheen and protect your project. And I'll teach you all about that by clicking this video next. All right, guys, everybody get out there and just create.